you're ready, here's Marilyn. Today. She's taking over CTV and she's my special co host for the next hour. Please welcome Olympic gold medalist Tessa Virtue. <laughs> When I go home, nobody applauds. Right, I was just saying, do you get used to this? It's so applauds. special. So I come here to just get applauded. What a nice right. way to enter a room. It's true, it's so good. <laughs> Last time I saw Tessa, everyone have a seat, a really get comfortable. <laughs> Last time I saw Tessa was, was you and Scott, I think, were running in the parking lot back here. That's right. To go grab lunch, to get something to eat before you surprise the women of the social on their 1,000 And by that time, up. you had been up for an yeah. eternity. And <laughs> you I had been, been go, 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 normal day. I said, congratulations on the gold medal. I gotta go to bed now. You were so, <laughs> she was so cute in your little Adidas tracksuit. Yeah, I was yeah. ready, ready to go. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're here today co-hosting with me for the full <laughs> hour. <laughs> and what a year you have had. Of course, I've met you a long, long time ago, and so how are you feeling? Are you still feeling it? I, it's been a little chaotic. It's yes. been a whirlwind, needless to say, since the games, and I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time processing. Yes. You know, I, I haven't been able to take a step back and think, what was it that happened in February? Right. You know, we really, right. Uh, and to go from such purpose to now, like, floundering a little bit, I'm kind of saying yes to everything and doing so many exciting yeah, things, but it's, it's a shift, for sure. Yeah, that's good. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. I saw you do Ellen. Yes. That was that exciting. Was that, yeah. that, I should have danced on my... Well, well, I was dancing out there, but I, sh I should have choreographed a little something. If you had fun on that show, oh, you'll have more fun on the show. I know, just show. you wait. <laughs> Taking over CTV today, she's already co-hosted your morning, co-hosting the social e-talk later on. Busy day for you. You won't have time to think today. <laughs> First up, we're going to do something with spring, like spring cooking with Chef Lynn Crawford. Let's go, Chef. <laughs> I'm and, such a big fan. And Marilyn Dennis, Lynn Crawford. Our our dream was to always skate. <laughs> was it? Wasn't it? What a dynamic oh duo you make. Lynn not... won a Lifetime Achievement Award for yes. Canada's 100 Best Restaurants. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks. So I have two gold medalists in my midst today. You know what, Marilyn? Okay. Honestly, I I'm, I'm in I'm in awe. I, I've admired, uh, you were such an inspiration to so many Canadians, yes. and you and Scott, what you did. Thank you, yeah. And you're so talented. Um, I just, isn't that well, amazing? amazing? I'm like, I'm like so shocked. It's a mutual admiration society we have going on here today, because I feel like I know you. Yeah. I see your name everywhere, and I'm, I'm such a big fan, so I can't wait to cook. Well, here we you. go. Make well, learn, three learn spring recipes using unusual ingredients, starting with Primavera Pizza. Well, let's talk about well, that. This Tessa, let's let's chef it up with Marilyn. She yeah. knows how to cook, but all about spring. So I'm the odd, odd woman out here. I, I have no skills in the kitchen. I don't believe that. I don't. Seriously. No, I'm well, very much well you know Easy. what? Stick with me, and uh, maybe by the end of this uh, this this day, we'll have a few new recipes for you to try. Right. You know, spring is really one of those seasons that the chefs get really excited about, and there's ingredients there that you haven't seen in so so long because they've been buried under the snow. And fiddleheads are one of those. And these are little, little fiddlehead fronds. I always see these at the market, and I'm never yeah. sure what to yeah. do with them. Well, I tell you, it's interesting because I didn't know anything about these until I came to this great country. And they of ours. have, they have a lovely and bright. I really like them. Fresh. You don't need to cook them. Yeah, they're blanched. Sure. You okay. just give them oh. a quick blanch in salted water, and they're really crunchy Good. and really fresh and really like it's spring. They smell like earth. <laughs> They and is that earthy. typical to put them on pizza or flatbread? Well, you know what? I love pizza, as Marilyn knows. I have right. a pizza oven at home. And what a, this topping is wonderful. It's morel mushrooms and the fiddleheads okay. sauteed together with some shallots. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. But Amazing. the base of the pizza is this pesto. And this pesto is, uh, I use walnuts for the pesto. And Tessa, so just dive in there and just, as we're, we're talking, we'll throw in the ingredients. What okay? are we throwing we're going in? in here? We're going to add to uh, the almond, okay. sorry, the, uh, the walnuts, some basil, basil. Okay. and ahead, some Tessa. Parmesan cheese and some spring you want, onion. You want all this in? Yeah, go for all it. All of the cheese? Okay. Yeah, oh. go for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we're going to add the olive yes. oil. 
to okay. that. And then we're going to put the lid onto the food processor there. And we're going to blitz all of those wonderful ingredients together. I'm just probably like, have oh, green in my teeth, don't I? No, 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 you're good. Right? We just blitz those. Oh, hang on, Tessa. Oh, oh you did, want I, did I do oh, something? Oh, uh, hang on. It's, uh, oh. oh, there we go. Oh, there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine if I didn't get a medal? Okay, hit the button, give it a whip. All right. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? It is now do fun. that little dance do here. The, there we go. Now this the lovely dance. pizza dough is ready. We're going to brush it with a little bit of olive oil okay, around. I got that. And I'm going to get the toppings for the rest of the pizza. So when that pesto is a nice puree, wonderful, we're going to add that right what to nice the color. base of the, of the dough. Okay. Do you like it like that? It's that perfect. Good? That's awesome. Marilyn? Shh. Yeah, okay, it's now, am I at risk am I get to over, over oil here, or am I okay? Well, you got a little bit of oil on uh, there. Too much? A little too much? Okay, no, okay. it's good. No, no, just, now you're okay, going to add... Well, no, just... this is, no, this is perfect. Okay. Then you're going to add to it some pesto, like a thin, nice layer. And oh, I'm John, going you, to you add some yeah. olive oil to our pan. Oh, and I'm going to get those morel mushrooms yes. sautéed with some shallots. Listen to that sizzle in the pan. And morels are one of the first mushrooms that you'll see in springtime. And, you know, Tessa, one thing about Chef Lynn, I love butter. I'm into butter. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right, now there's the butter in there. Thank you so much. A pinch of thyme. You like pesto too, you it's two. Just, yeah, we, we sure do. do. We have our pesto. Now, and I want to ask you this. Before, you're, before you go and, and compete, mm -hmm. you probably have a very strict diet. I do. Just I work for with energy um, and everything. Yeah, I work with a nutritionist and yeah. a naturopath, and it was very much a part of our training. We just need to fuel our bodies yeah. because we're demanding so much of them. Mm -hmm. So so much training, but because of all that working out, I, I like to treat myself, and so I what and do you I treat don't yourself with lots of dessert. I have a sweet tooth. You so do lots of dessert. Wow, yeah. That's good to yeah. know. Okay. But pizza is a good a good treat too. Ah, yeah. oh, sure. So, so you're, when we get look at those mushrooms, see how all those flavors are mingling together. And the, and the fiddleheads with the shallots and a little bit of thyme. Boy, I like if that I smell. May. That's so if good. I may. And you like to cook. I, I, I'm, I, let me tell you, okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> when, my son, when my son lived with me, yeah, I cooked did. a little bit more. Okay. Um, oh, and then funny. when he left, uh, and then came back three times, because <laughs> he lived in the basement, um, I would cook again. And then... This weekend, Lynn, I want to let both of you know, I cooked apple zucchini soup. Oh. I cooked pumpkin muffins. I did panko wow. chicken because it was kind of icky outside. Yeah. Right. And I got going that's on nice that. So, so when you do that, like I, I, I find it therapeutic. I had some great music on. I went, okay, that's good. I that. But I don't do it a lot. And I, I once you a are, look, You are a look. look, this. But I learned this. from chefs like Lynn. This right. is buffalo mozzarella. Okay. And that this is, creamy, delicious okay. cheese is so decadent and so divine wow. and so perfect with that lovely earthiness of the morel mushrooms. Yes. And the fiddleheads. I'm going to go in the oven with this. Yes. And let's see. Here we go. Uh-huh. La, la, la. This is it. Well, here we go. And the, oh, I'm gonna, the magic yeah, of I'm TV. Gonna a, look at all right Marilyn, Dennis. <laughs> look what you've made. Beautiful. Lovely. Beautiful. It's it amazing. Okay. So then you put a little oil on okay. it, too. Yeah, That's good. I noticed you didn't up. let me do the, the oil that time. No. Just Don't over oil. <laughs> So yeah, the next one is here. shrimp grits with white asparagus. You go over there. Okay. Here. So listen, yeah. this one. Who doesn't love a lovely appetizer when you're, uh, you know, entertaining some guests? And this is all about one of those ingredients for spring that we love so much, and it's white asparagus. Little bit unique in that they are the first asparagus that you will see in spring, and they're quite lovely so and nice. ivory white, and they have that lovely snap, right? And they are just so sweet and mm. decadent. They're mm -hmm. really a special, special And talk treat. about nice presentation. I mean, I might not be into cooking, but I'm all about how it looks. So I feel like this would be a really gorgeous dish on ah, the plate. Ah, presentation. Yeah. It's got to taste good. It just has just to right. taste good. <laughs> <laughs> appearances. So we're going to make the lovely grit. So they're, 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 it's actually a, a stone ground corn into uh, milk. And you could use a little milk in stock if you want. And you just stir the cornmeal into the milk, and you season that up with a little bit of salt and pepper, so it mm -hmm. is lovely divine. And as it cooks, stirring and stirring, so much love, so much love goes into it. Then you have this, Whoa. lovely, and then you add, what's my favorite ingredient? 
Parmesan Loving cheese. It. And Loving what? It. And what else? Oh, what are we adding? Some oh, butter. butter. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like crazy. <laughs> this one is skating. Crazy, bro. There we go. Perfect. And lovely spring onions. And if it's all about the presentation, yeah. we're going to do this. This looks fairly easy for you I and like I, I can too. handle this. We, yeah. I know you can, can but that. the shrimp on top. These lovely shrimp peeled and deveined, cooked in some butter and some shallots. Mm -hmm. We add to it our asparagus right into the wow, pan. Wow, wow, wow. Oh. Yeah, we're just gonna do these. These have been blanched right into the pan. And we're going to make sure that we get some of that lovely flavor with the butter and the shrimp right on top. And now we're going to present. Who would like to do the presentation? I think Tessa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just throw me this in is, this Okay. Is like, yeah, you can do it. No, right. But when you get home at the end of the day, do you really feel like cooking still? Do you feel like making dinner? My days are quite long, to be perfectly right. honest. And when I do get home, it is kind of late. But you know what? I do enjoy cooking. You still have I the really passion do. for it. Yeah, absolutely. You need to. And when I have my friends come over or family, I mean, it's always about that lovely meal that we're going to share together or there's always there's always a fun snickety snack so this is a little hot there tessa okay. but arrange the asparagus okay we're doing asparagus don't touch that there okay. we go arrange the asparagus and a few of the shrimp marilyn you've got some nice basil beside you that i you do i do um uh, nothing makes me happier than getting yeah, invited to your house right. for football Play game this is beautiful. Right, Lynn? Are you liking this? I love Marilyn. it, Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn. You know what I mean, Lynn? You're doing, you're doing great. I said, uh, nothing makes me happier than when you invite me over to watch the Steelers play anybody. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> because it's not, about the, it's not about the game. It's about the food. Do you want it like that? Great, do you want, or do you want like that? We've had a few tailgates. Do you want like that or like that? Which way? Um, it's up to Tessa, really, because I'm going to be judging this oh, momentarily. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I thought it was getting away from the judge No, no, thing. no. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Please do. Yeah, have you put your foot I don't on know. This. Maybe I didn't cut up enough. But there, there you go. Chef. A little bit of oil. Watch it worth it. A little bit watch of oil. Watch oil everywhere. Watch virtue Why with the oil. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Beautiful. Lynn will be back later on the White show with her Paris. third spring recipe. More with Tessa <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> You better get ready to stand up <laughs> because we have real estate royalty coming in. We've got a gold medal camp, Tessa Virtue, co-hosting the show with me today. And now, everybody, get ready to stand up. Here to help first-time home buyers make smart moves, please welcome Brian Ballmer and Sarah Ballmer. <laughs> Somebody just had a birthday, Sarah Ballmer. <laughs> you look fabulous. It was a big you look one. 39 was, again. Was that like that? That was that was a surprise birthday, was it not? Yes. That was. Was it? And was. then how did it go? Were you surprised? One of our friends was too busy to make it, but. <laughs> No, I but just But everybody else was there. Oh, I know. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. And you both look tan. Why do you look tan? What happened? We're working on some new stuff. Okay. <laughs> so Can you share? Yeah, we bought, a, like we bought an old hotel on an island in the Bahamas. And, you know, we... Where yes. It needs a little work. Wow. Ooh. And Marilyn's going to send everybody there for a month. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Ready? Here we go. Everyone. And you get a paintbrush. And you get a paintbrush. Yes. And you get a paintbrush. <laughs> I'm very excited for you. Um, let's talk about, uh, we're going to talk about real estate right now. That is a big purchase, which yes. is very exciting. And we're going to talk to you a little bit. Do you want to talk about it now or that's about as yeah, far as Yeah, I mean, you're going to gonna get to see it in January. There'll be a new show called the Island of Brian coming out. Com the what? Island, Island of, of Brian. Brian. Wow. So you've done all the filming. No, 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 no. We haven't started, no, we haven't no. started yet. The hotel's going to open December 1st. It's a mix of this is fun. we bought a zoo and, and <laughs> Lord of the Flies. So. Did you have moments of regret just thinking, what did we do? What have we taken on? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> My life has been one giant moment of regret. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's far, it's far, very it's overwhelming. Far, far We're a little uh, right? daunting. No, it's what two an hours and 45 one. minutes into NASA and, a, and an 18-minute flight south, and, and you're there. And where are the kids gonna? What's happening with We're the children? We're homeschooling the children. 
<laughs> Lord I give credit to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so this yeah. is exciting. So we'll follow you guys on that one. Okay. Now, we, we also want to talk about the, the new season of Home to Win. Oh, and right. I have to ask, do you, how long have you had your house? I purchased my house in 2011. Right. And I think I did everything you're not supposed to do as a first time home buyer. So I'm, I'm happy to hear your tips. I didn't look at one other house. I, you, you I walked into the, this one, and it was a purely me? emotional decision. I, I just knew I needed to have it. I couldn't picture anyone else living there. And it was a fixer upper. I don't know I anyone there. else that does that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know anyone else yeah. that would do something I, like I that. I lived there for a couple all. years and then spent, it's 100 years old. Um, so it has oh, a lot of character, a lot yeah, of yeah, charm. Yeah. I'm a bit of an old soul. And then I spent two years getting character it. Character and charm are, are synonyms for asbestos and mold. I learned that. <laughs> was a flood and here I was thinking I would be buying chandeliers and these vintage rugs and I was buying weeping tiles. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. It was a good learning curve. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So you still love it though? I absolutely love it. Oh, it's, I travel differently. I'm on the road so much and sure. I travel differently knowing yeah. that I have a home base yeah. and it's something that is thing. calm and a nice getaway mm -hmm. and you know it's the way that I've left it. Is it ready for a house tour with Marilyn and his crew or are you just not quite finished? I would love it? to welcome you there. Yeah. Are, you, or are you ready to leave it to Brian? You know what? I'm working on a cottage reno, so I might uh, you pick your way out. Okay, so Stay we're gonna shows. we're gonna yeah. talk about Home to Win. Talk to me about this show. Like, I mean, season three season already. Three. I know. It's hard to believe. All these famous people. There's 26 of us together. How do you all get along, first of all? Because I know a couple of you. It's, it's like, Everybody's got their own trailer, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, Scott's like... in makeup for three days. I know. <laughs> gotta... It's a lot like summer camp. Yeah. yeah. Because we we yeah. only see each other. Everyone's so busy doing their own things. Sure filming, doing everything, and then we all come together. And I feel for everyone trying to get us in one place. Yes. Because we are just chatting and showing pictures, and it's truly like summer camp when we're all together. You're a children. You are. Yeah, I know yeah. that for is, sure. Yeah. I know that you are. He's the leader of the pack. So, um, so um, <laughs> what we're going to talk about, he is the leader of the pack. <laughs> what, I, what I want everyone for, to hear from you two is that you, like, unlike yourself, Tom, is that you should really do your homework before you buy a house, yeah. right? I mean, that's, but what does that I, I'm mean? I'm 50-50. What does that mean, though? I mean, a lot of properties we bought, we've walked in, and, and in that five minutes, we've said this is it. And, okay, so you got the same You know, point. the last three houses yeah. and a hotel, and that, that, I mean, yeah. there's lots of stuff we've done. Yeah. Like We're pretty emotional when it comes to it as well. However. However, if you're not experienced in, in buying and selling <laughs> a lot of real estate or traveling a lot and seeing different areas, you, you definitely have to do your research. They, mm -hmm. they say location is one of the most important things. Uh, there's, there's tools online now, which you can actually look at different neighborhoods to find out all the amenities you want to be close to mm -hmm. that may open your mind to communities that you, you hadn't thought of before. That's um, kind of a game changer since the last five years, don't you think? Yeah. Definitely. You it's find a little bit more, you know, more about traffic flow, you know, more about yeah. cost mm -hmm. of living for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and budget's a big one. Uh, that's the very yeah. first thing. Yeah, I know, you, I know you don't want to hear this. I've learned, I've learned over the years since we bought our first house together. We'll go straight to therapy after this, but <laughs> you need to have a budget before you do anything, mm -hmm. before you go looking for a house. I mean, we have all kinds of dreams that we can't necessarily pay for. So you need to have that budget and then take 30% off of that because most people, okay. when you do buy a home, you move in and you realize there's some issues here. Right. Yes. And I need to spend money. And if you're at the top yeah. of your budget, you can't spend that money in your house poor. And you're yep. buying, you're, you're purchasing, like you're saying, Tesha, things that are not pretty, that things that are needed to have done. It's We're going to. It's a gonna, matter, of, we, matter of opinion. Man, yeah. yeah. What, well, what's you pretty like to <laughs> Uh, six uh, tips to help the first-time home buyers get on, uh, on the property ladder. Number one, figure out what you can afford. Exactly. Okay. Well, this is really Number setting one. a plan as yeah. well because yeah. I think people come to us and they really have no plan of attack. They have no idea how long they're looking, if it's a family home or a forever home mm -hmm. or just a short and sweet in and out. Okay. Number two, get pre-approved for a mortgage. Exactly. If you're out house hunting, I mean, I, we, we've always gotten deals on properties because we've realized we don't have to buy this. Mm -hmm. You want to find the property that you like, but that, you know, our, our last property, the guy said, I really got to sell this. I've already bought another home. I can't afford two. And I said, you are the perfect match. We're going to get along just fine because uh, we're going we're gonna to go in low. Right. So get pre-approved so when you do find something, you can throw an offer yeah. in today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number three, save for a down payment. Yes. yes. Okay, how what do you have to, how much? What what do you have to do? Well, you don't even know what the house that you Here's want the yet. problem and it, you know, if I take myself back to my 20s, I look at my parents and say, "So what the hell is saving? I don't need to save. You've saved for me." Um, <laughs> but then you, that then, was the attitude. That and was then they the tell you like, "No, no, you're not getting this." Um, that was the attitude. <laughs> people people always ask, "How little can I put down to get a mortgage?" But the less you put down, the higher your mortgage payments are going to be. 
the more you put down, the faster you can get the residual paid down, the, more, the, the faster you can get to a point where you're actually making compound interest instead of spending compound mm -hmm. interest. Right, so right, right. Put down as much as you can. So what would you tell your children then as they, as they start working with your little paycheck, even though, you know, you're kind of living at home, we'd like you to save X amount from your paycheck when you're working at the fast food place or we, what have We've you. already got Dave Chilton's are, the are wealthy they, barber uh, for them. Uh, <laughs> like, but we already teach them, here's 20 bucks a week okay. for allowance. 15 of that's mine for rent. Heat, hydro, food. Yeah. Brian's the government. No kidding. And here's your five bucks. Because <laughs> right. when I got out of school, I thought, this is, you don't have to pay tax, there's no expenses. Yep. And then yeah. it's, you get a wake up call. No, she was raised the same way I was raised. And you referenced this, but to think about the neighborhood, not just oh. the house. Right, yeah. right. right? It's yeah. so much well, location, different. I think location is key, and a, a lot of people go into it, and they want to be in a specific area because of schools, because of hospitals, all of those things. Or out in the middle of nowhere in the forest. But you also have to make sure you can afford to live in that neighborhood. So I think f for us, when we say start with what you can afford and then figure out what amenities you need and sort mm -hmm. of work backwards. But people drive around these neighborhoods, they say, that's where I want to be. Then they overspend, they can't afford their mortgage, they don't have a large enough down payment, yeah. and it's just a cyclical effect. And the last Last thing you got 30 seconds to mention this one. This is so important that maybe you didn't do, Tessa. Right. Well, I did eventually, but dig yeah. deep <laughs> during a home inspection. Yeah, th there's two ways to look at that, too. Sometimes to get the home in the location you want, you're going to have to get the worst house in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's fine to get the most p potential like to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're planning on just moving in, I mean, look behind the curtains, look in the attic. Don't be, and, and again, no offense, and don't be blinded our... by the throw pillows. All of that, none of that, none of that stuff matters. Because I can bring you some throw yeah. pillows, right? I promise. Yeah. The more decorations, the more issues there are they're trying to hide with the house. So look behind the I, I felt that uh, we both had an open invitation to come down to this new bill yeah, that yeah, you yeah. have. Yes, I was getting that yeah. sense, too. Yeah, but, yeah. but I, 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 uh, when it's done. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, that we're, the, you can come we're down. fueling a jet right now. Oh, okay, so. okay, all right. Well, thanks for both of you. Always uh, fantastic ideas that you're doing. I wish you well with this. I really, really yeah. do. And and I, I, maybe we can bring our cameras down. I think Marilyn live in the Bahamas. What? I love that idea. I love it. Thank you to both of you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Okay, we're with Tessa when we come back. We'll be right back, everybody. Up next. Tessa Virtue is my special co-host today. Tessa Virtue's here today. <laughs> It is Earth Day this week, uh, this Sunday, and all week along, eco expert Candace Batista is showing us how we can go green room by room. So take it away. Here's Candace on how we can go green in our living room. Here we go. Your living room is. Please welcome Candace Batista. Okay. So we don't often think about indoor pollution, and I know yes. that we've talked about that before, but plants are so important. Oh my gosh, plants that. are amazing. So yeah. I mentioned plants in the, in the edit. Yes. So we're going to start first with the spider plant, which is this guy here. Comes in a wide variety of sizes from Sheridan Nurseries. The spider plant is actually the first plant that NASA sent to space. How amazing is that? Yeah. And studies have shown that can actually reduce indoor air pollution um, by 90% over two days. And they didn't kill the plant. Right? I did. <laughs> Me too. On Earth. I have the worst green thumb. Please don't tell yeah, right, anybody. Right. <laughs> but still, you know what? If you go to a lot of office buildings, they, right? they've got spider plants because they're hardy. And they're so yeah. hardy. And then and we have the, the snake plant, which yeah. is another very hardy plant. I love all of these plants because they're super low maintenance. Yes. I was just going to ask. Right? What, how, what does it take to For look someone after like these? me, low maintenance, you're watering when they get, when they get okay. dry. They don't yeah. need a lot of sunlight. They're great for right. indoors. And I like the spider plant because it's great to use at night, especially in bedrooms. So if you're worried about somebody who has asthma, or respiratory issues, this is going to help to actually pull really? out CO2 and help to breathe out oxygen. So it's a great nighttime plant. Wow. And then finally, we have the Dracaena. So the Dracaena is an interesting plant because it helps to actually pull things out like formaldehyde and benzene and another super low maintenance plant. I have one of those and I never planted it. It's in water because oh. my girlfriend said, don't ever put this in dirt and it keeps growing and growing and growing and it's in my bathroom and I don't move it because I'm afraid I'll kill it. I know. <laughs> I'm like I'm like that too. But I just want to say it's 9 years old ladies and gentlemen. Ah! <laughs> 9 years old. Come on over here. So let's talk about air purifiers. Yes. Because so with these super duper like um, um, windows that are really tightly sealed and everything, yes. they start talking about 
uh, totally. you know, indoor pollution. Indoor air pollution. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things in our homes that give off VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Right. Just little bits of particles that are like pollution that kind of roam around the house. And that comes from paints and carpets and all kinds of different right. things. So a really good filter like this. This is kind of the creme de la creme of filters. This has seven different filters inside of it, including a HEPA filter. So HEPA filters are great because they reduce allergens by about 90% in the home. But then it also has a charcoal filter, which is really awesome for things like airborne bacteria, pet dander, cigarette smoke, all of that kind of stuff. And you it's can sleek mount looking. This, and it's sleek looking. You can mount it on the wall, okay. which is awesome. So if you want to have it up and out of the way. Um, but it's just really great for people who have allergies, who have asthma. And it's just going to help to reduce. For the, for the just household. one unit. That's well, great. I would put it in the, in the area of the home where you have the person who's most likely to have asthma and respiratory issues. So either in a bedroom or in a living room for sure, because yeah. that's where we spend a lot of our time just hanging. Now tell us a little bit about these eco paints. Yes, so eco paints, so uh, paints do off gas in the home, so that adds to indoor air pollution. And then of course we keep our windows closed a lot in mm -hmm. this part of the world mm -hmm. because the weather never seems to want to Surprise There's never us. any sunshine. <laughs> um, so paints are a great way. So Health Canada sense to always look for lower VOC paints, which are, again, those little volatile organic compounds. These are three of my favorite. This is Safe Coat um, from AMF. This is great for people who are chemically sensitive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are getting much more sensitive to perfumes and different smells, especially people who have allergies and different kind of issues. So that's a great option for them. Then we move to Color House, which is another low VOC. These are third-party certified for lower VOCs, meaning okay. that they tested the paints and the paints actually okay. are much lower. Okay, good. And then you can go zero VOC with these awesome paints. These are made from milk, right? Well, milk paint. You're like, paint. what? Milk paint. So uh, milk has a byproduct or a protein in it called casein, and that is what this is made of. And then they add minerals and clay and limestone, and all you need to do is add water. You can literally make this stuff in your blender. They have so many great tutorials online, and Homestead is actually the only company in Canada that makes milk paints, and they say that they've even found these on caves because of how far back it goes. So, so cool. Wow. Right? On caves. Oh, yeah, like they were painting painter. with milk. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they took their blender. <laughs> Around, plugged it in, plugged and it in, it. and they <laughs> zipped it up. <laughs> but you know, I know a lot of people that have little, that have little ones. When oh, newborns, for sure, they do this non-toxic. Yeah, if you, have, 100%, yeah. if you have a new baby, a baby right. on the way, these are really great options. And we are and standing on some eco carpets. Yes, Tell me eco about that. carpets. So uh, synthetic carpets, a lot of the time when they're manufactured on the back, they have backings that are made with glues and different kinds of. Um, Prod, uh, different kinds of, I don't want to say chemicals, but just adhesives mm -hmm. that can sure. add to or yep. make your indoor air pollution a little bit not so great. So I always say opt for natural fibers as opposed to synthetic fibers because natural fibers will actually help to reduce dust mites, dust mite droppings. These are both jute carpets from West Elm Love. and they're also ethically made. And West Elm is doing some really great work connecting people with local artisans who are making these products. That's great. Well, thanks for making us aware of this. Thank you so much, Candice. Yeah, and for more information, go to maryland.ca. Okay, more with Tessa when we come back. Thanks, Candice. <laughs> This just in, Tessa Virtue is taking over CTV today. <laughs> and already she did your morning. She's doing my show. She's doing the social. She's doing e-talk. We have to feed her, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you need a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's need... going to be so sick of me by the end of today. No. Oh, no, 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 Well no, fed. No. This looks amazing. What are we no. doing here? We have, what are we? <laughs> Onto the food. Bacon. I'm hungry. What's yeah. the bacon right now? Okay. Listen. So what are you doing that's like kind of wild and you know, kind of spring-like too, I guess. It is spring. Yeah. This is a spring. This is the ultimate Canadian spring sandwich. Okay. Email on a bun. Yeah. Yes. With a spring onion relish. Okay. I love fairs, you know? <laughs> yeah. You love fair, a fair? Like, if I love fairs. Do you? And so I feel like this is just right up my alley. I don't know. I there's something, have that. Yeah, there's something about this. It's just, you know, the St. Lawrence Market, right. going to the fair, yeah. big yeah. Kaiser bun yeah. with this... The honey mustard oh, aioli, and then just on. like yeah. stack and it up with layers yeah, of like yeah. email bacon. Right. Oh, yeah. I got okay, right. Okay, let's into get it, going on I? this. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where do we begin? So, pea meal, delicious. You just want to give a little bit more flavor to it. So, it is a honey mustard glaze. So, Tessa, guess what? You're going to glaze here. it up. Okay. Now, can you just buy the honey mustard? 
glazed, or do no, you, you want to, to make, make it? Oh my I'm gosh, sure. I'm just gonna. Yes, I'm gonna glaze it. Okay. I like to glaze it. Yeah, yeah, just put, yeah, it's yeah, called no. a short program. Well, you know, but you no. I mean, you can, but like, how how easy is that? Like, you pick the perfect. No, okay. no, never. You you. I'm a classic overcorrector. No, so just, just give me some all feedback in here. There. I'm gonna sit back and just watch you. <laughs> This is good. Do now, it. see this pan over here? We're gonna put this on the stove. This is the beginning of the relish. Okay. Oh. The relish, okay. okay. Tessa, here, here you go. That. You're doing a great job. All right. Here you go. Take it away oh, there, Chiefy. Chef. What am I doing? Oh, well, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna make the relish. Okay. That's so you don't touch I will those, because it's hot, okay. I worry about that. Okay. Now, you've got the bacon in the pan. You've rendered that bacon. It's smoky, it's delicious. You're gonna add in that lovely crunch. What is this? Nice celery. Ooh. Oh, oh a little one? crunchy crunch. Now the crunch. celery, the celery hearts are the beautiful oh. addition. Oh, it's popping like crazy over there. Isn't Happen. it fun? There, the, the celery so that's hearts. The tops of the of the celery. Yeah, and it adds this fresh. Look at oh. you're doing. Do I look great. like natural? Yeah, you do. Now, now I'm baking it well. But just occasionally, just shake the pan. Oh. Okay. There. Oh, careful. <laughs> the pickles. What kind Not of yet. pickles? Wait, the Not spring yet. onions first. Let's okay, put those onions. spring Good. onions in there. Do you like pickles, Mel? You're I concerned there. Okay, love okay, pickles. Excited. Some hot chilies. Woo! I just worked with this woman for so long, you don't add the pickles until the end. I feel like I do this <laughs> and I move and the pan doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of olive oil. Then. The pickles, are you pickles. ready? Then bring on the pickles. The diced pickles. Sizzle, oh, sizzle, sizzle. Removing the pan from the heat, just right in front here, mm -hmm. and we're going to add the apple cider vinegar. Oh, back away, just a second. Back away, Two steps. Steam. Okay. Oh, it was. <laughs> I, thought, I was. I, I was expecting a heck of a lot more. Slightly I don't know. I thought. Yet. I thought I was going to see a flame or a triple <laughs> axle or something. I got nothing. <laughs> so, okay. Are we right, back on so, the heat? Are we off the heat? We're back on the heat. Back on the heat. All right. And some chopped parsley in there, and then. The pepper, crack it in. Into the relish? Yes. Okay. Can I leave that in there? Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you this question, Tessa. Yes. When, fun? When, yes. when Scott lifts you up and we have the best faith in him, but we kind of imagine we're you. Oh my gosh. I wish I could even. Do you ever say, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not, whoa, I'm up. Like, <laughs> like I would, do you ever have like no, that? I feel not, like... much more comfortable in the air at <laughs> high speed, blades flying than I do right here in this moment. Oh, do you? <laughs> okay, that's amazing. I love it. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. So now, we're introducing you to a new world. Yes. So I just applaud both you and Scott oh, for the you. unbelievable. He's amazing. He is amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. And to talk about the grace, like, you know, I have to tell you, when I'm watching the Olympics and I saw you guys perform, I knew you had it. We oh, all yeah. did. But some other people, I was like, I don't know. You're not gonna make it. But when you guys came on, Did I you knew know? it. Did you know? Did you know it? <laughs> I knew we were ready. I had a, I had this great feeling that, you know, I wouldn't want to come up against us. It was right. just, we had an amazing team. We were peaking at the right moment. Right. We had faith in our programs yeah. and. The uh, relish is peaking. <laughs> it's peaking. actually, it's peaking. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, that's great. I oh, just, oh my God, so amazing. We do, we do try to, I was just telling Tessa during the break that when, uh, let's go back to 1960, <laughs> and Peggy Fleming was like the star skater, and I used to watch her and then go into my parents' kitchen with my socks on and try to do everything that Peggy Fleming does. <laughs> And when I think about Peggy Fleming and how graceful she is and how lovely she is, it reminds me of you with such oh, grace. Very nice. With such Thank grace. You. I Thank really, so I really mean that. Thank you. I really do. Thank you. Okay, so this is, this is, this is a honey mustard aioli. Oh yes, it is. Oh, yes, a little it is. mayonnaise. Palmery mustard and a okay. little bit of honey. So we're gonna slather that on the bun. Okay, bun. let's make that. So we're she going can have lunch. to take. That pima. Well, Tessa, you're doing. This is okay. it. Tessa's yeah. gonna Build make your the ultimate sandwich. Canadian sandwich. Right. So I Please. want you to know that this is Tessa's lunch today. Yes. yes. Um, so don't I don't worry know about if the social then. or e talker yeah. theater, but you can tell that we're gonna <laughs> just, do that. Just make yourself a sandwich. Lynn's recipes. <laughs> we don't one. Oh, okay. Lynn's recipes are on Maryland.ca as they build a sandwich. We throw to a break. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> Coming up, you can. 
back with Tessa Virtue, who's been co-hosting this whole show today. She's doing a great job, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Please welcome my friend designer Samantha Pin. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful girls. Okay, so I want to ask you, when you get a lot of flowers thrown to you on the ice. I do, and I have to say, that's sort of my guilty pleasure, and I'll treat myself with flowers whenever I'm home, but uh, when they're filming ice, I love to share them. So oh, yeah. the volunteers like, at the arena, the <laughs> hotel staff, them. I love giving, oh, I love sharing good. that. That's yeah. cool. I always wonder what happened to those <laughs> yeah. flowers. So many. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about, um, uh, you know, the, the weather is not great across the country, really. Yeah. Okay, maybe a little part in BC, but other than that, not great right now. So, so flowers really add something. Flowers brighten love the room, yeah. right? Yeah. But the thing is, is that you want them to be easy, and the right vase and the right flower is what's going to make it easy. Okay, let's get a crash course well, on this. Yeah, because you know what? We've all, I'm sure you've had flowers like these thrown to you on the ice, wrapped in beautiful paper, mm -hmm. or you've bought them at the floral market or grocery mm -hmm. store. You take them home, and it's like... You yeah. put them in your wide mouth vase, wow. and you feel like, oh, what went wrong? You don't have enough flowers. You probably need six to ten times more for okay. a wide mouth vase like this. So that's where the julep vase comes into play. You want to go tighter and shorter. So here's your julep vase. You're going to cut so that your stems and your stems are as tall as the julep vase. There you go. Maybe even shorter than that. And then take an elastic band. Here we go. This will work. And throw them in, and it's like you there have a professional you go. Pretty. What are those called? The These flowers? are ranuncula. Ranuncula. Okay. I've been ranuncula. searching for those for a year. Yeah. I found them, fell in love in France with them, and, yeah. and I didn't know what they were called. Ranuncula. ranuncula. Okay. Not a nice name Not for nice. a beautiful flower. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous flower. Really. Okay, next thing. Next. So these are pitchers and hourglass vases. So if you had a heart attack because you're not into cutting long stems, and even long stem roses stems are not gorgeous, so I don't have a problem. But if you have a problem, you're going to go with an hourglass vase or a pitcher. Yeah. Pitchers are nice because they're modern mm -hmm. or they're a little bit country. You can go either way. They hold flowers that are tall, like snaps and stalk. Are you still uh, putting elastic band around them, or you don't really need to? You don't need, need to. to because right. you know what? It's an, it's wide at the bottom, then it cinches I in gotcha. at the top, and then it flares a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that little bit. That cinch holds them together, but then the flare allows them to feel loose Pretty. and more full. Yeah. And you can, and like all of you these. You said they can be modern too, because you do think of the picture as being very rustic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and these, True. I mean, this is a modern picture. These ones, okay, all these are real. They're from Thanks. Rosa Flora. They're grown. That's <laughs> real. <laughs> Locally. And that, but you know what? You would never know. You don't know, <laughs> and I love them for that. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, and like, I, these are Maryland's. They, they're so, they're so beautiful. They're beautiful. Now. I love it on a table, a long table. I know that sometimes our, our good friend, Clodagh McKenna, yes. who loves putting on these great chef's you know, dinners, she does this one vase, one bloom. Tell us about because that. Because it's so easy. They're bud vases. Mm -hmm. They're inexpensive. They're from Ikea. You could do one on a mantle. Pretty. All you need is an orchid, a broken tulip from one that was thrown on the ice at you, or a snapdragon. And yes, grouped on mass, right. strength in numbers, they're gorgeous. Or you can just do one on its own. It's very Sprinkle pretty. them around the house. Then yeah. There's a little bit in every room. Happiness yeah. in like every room. Idea. Happy. Exactly. <laughs> now, what about these vases? So, rectangular vases or cylinder vases are my go-to vase because they're super easy to arrange in. Because they're narrow, mm -hmm. they hold the stems in tightly, and you really, you just can't go wrong. They just hold them in tightly, make them stand up really straight like they're in the army, and they're always perfect. That's your favorite, you said. You could, I like that color combination, everybody. Yeah. The orange and the mauve and the white's pretty. Well, and the thing is, is that yeah. I usually go all one type of flower, all one color, or not more than three elements if you want to make it fast and easy. Okay, very right? good. Yeah. Now, tell you really, this is beautiful. So if you need a lower arrangement, something for the dining mm -hmm. table, and you want something that's in the center, often we'll go to a low wide vase. This is really tricky to work with because floral foam and tape they take time. So what you're going to do is go for something like a globe vase. This is a gorgeous one from Teatro. It's opaque, so you don't focus on the murky water or the stems or the fact that I used ribbon and rubber bands to hold this arrangement together. Big mop head flowers like chrysanthemums or hydrangea, and then you insert the smaller ranuncula or roses, That's set it in, idea. and it's Beautiful. done. Right? And you can see across the dining room table, which is right. nice. Nice to do a low arrangement like Does that. Does Martha Stewart say? 
no higher than your elbow. <laughs> I guess it depends on who you're having dinner oh, with. That's, right. yeah, exactly. that's the only thing I learned from Martha Stewart. <laughs> okay, and what's what's this all about? By the way, love this. This is a fabulous vase. This is when <laughs> this is when you get flowers, and maybe you have a small amount, and you you want to go a little bit more modern because you have to. Yes. Maybe you only have a mug or a glass or that wide mouth vase. You're going to tie your flowers together tightly, See, put them good. in, and it's a very clean look. How do they do that thing with the with the with the tulips when they set it in and they twist it and it all looks so beautiful. It's tricky. You just have to practice. So you put them all in your hand. Right. You know how and they do the clear boss? Thing. Well, you make sure that the tulips are all at the same height, uh -huh. right? And then what you do is you twist the stems gently, gently. Otherwise, they'll break. Oh, and then, and then you spiral. and then you yes. set them in. I right. mean, yeah. that's like Michael Pellegrino at Teatro Verde. Yeah, no, he's, I'm not so if good you at go, it. If you, go, <laughs> if you go to, if you have the chance to go to the Four Seasons here in Toronto yes. and you see the beautiful flowers in the foyer, that is Michael for sure. Yeah, I can't tell you. Great to see you great again. Great to see you. A <laughs> Pleasure having you co-host oh, today. Tessa Virtue, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for being my guest. There you go. Flowers, oh, run, give us. Tessa is getting a bouquet of flowers and a pea meal bacon sandwich. That's what you get. No payment here. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>